Are you grateful for your marriage or for your single blessedness? Good morning, everyone. This is our reflection for today. A man and a woman had been married for more than 60 years. They had shared everything. They had talked about everything. They had kept no secrets from each other, except that the little old woman had a shoebox in the top of her closet that she had cautioned her husband never to open or ask her about. For all of these years, he had never thought about the box. But one day, the little old woman got very sick and the doctor said she would not recover. In trying to sort out their affairs, the little old man took down the shoebox and took it to his wife's bedside. She agreed that it was time that he should know what was in the box. When he opened it, he found two crocheted dolls and a stack of money totaling $95,000. He asked her about the contents. When we were to be married, she said, my grandmother told me the secret of a happy marriage was to never argue. She told me that if I ever got angry with you, I should just keep quiet and crochet a doll. The little old man was so moved, he had to fight back tears. Only two precious dolls were in the box. She had only been angry with him two times in all those years of living and loving. He almost burst with happiness. Honey, he said, that explains the dolls, but what about all of this money? Where did it come from? Oh, she said, that's the money I made from selling the dolls. In today's Gospel reading, Jesus shows us the value of love in marriage despite the tensions that may constantly arise. This love can also find expression in one's single blessedness. The rigid Jewish law that Jesus seemed to defy with his relaxed interpretation riled the religious leaders of his time. Recall the picking of the grains of wheat by his disciples that was considered as work and prohibited on a Sabbath day, or their eating without washing their hands. However, when it came to lifelong fidelity in marriage and celibacy for the sake of his heavenly kingdom, Jesus was immovable and uncompromising. The Pharisees quoted from the book of Deuteronomy to defend their view of divorce in marriage. And there were two schools of thought here. The school of Shammai would only allow marital unfaithfulness as a justification for divorce. The Hillel school, however, allowed divorce if a wife did something the husband did not like, such as her cooking. But Jesus goes as far back as Genesis for God's original intention of marriage. A man must leave his father and mother and cling to his wife, and the two become one body from Genesis. Jesus wants to protect women from being ignored and cast aside at the whim of their husbands. We reflect today, brothers and sisters, on the condition of our hearts, either in marriage or in being single. As a married couple, do we accept the responsibilities that our covenant requires of us and the reality that there will be many stress points in our marriage? I recall a man who had a flourishing taxi business in Japan and was driving for me around Tokyo many years back. He narrated that he left his wife for another woman because his wife was a nagger. He regretted doing so because he realized that in all their years together, she was a good wife and mother. She took care of him, their child, and the house well. She was very organized and doting compared to his new partner who spent her time in the beauty parlor and kept on asking him for money to buy expensive accouterments. On the other hand, as a single person, God's vocation for you may be to remain unmarried, to serve His purpose. An acceptance of this reality can bring out the best in you, but this acceptance must be premised on gratefulness for what you have and a faith in God to direct the path that you should take. Today's first reading helps us to realize that everything we have, including our spouse, comes from God. While it is us who chooses out of our own free will, God has allowed our marriages to happen. He will also allow the marriage to bloom, or our single blessedness to boom, if we frame our minds and our hearts to His desire for us. That is why in Paul's letter to the Thessalonians, he says, Give thanks in all circumstances. Praying together daily as husband and wife, and having a regular one-on-one -on -one communication, reduces tensions in your marriage. You can find time for these if you want to, 
especially in this pandemic time where you are holed up together at home? How about setting romantic rituals to enliven, spice up, and differentiate your marriage? Saying I love you daily or squeezing your hands three times when holding each other after prayer or kissing after saying grace before meals are examples of unique ways to touch each other's life. As a single person, find joy, for instance, in taking care of your parents. Thank them for the years they have served you to bring you where you are today. Or indulge yourself in charity work that will open your eyes to the blessings that you have that others lack. Be a giver more than a receiver, and life will be a light yoke to carry on your back. Whatever your state of life is today, don't let your circumstance box you in. Shine your shoes and step out of your box and be dolled up to face life with God's grace of joy that emanates from a grateful heart. Let us pray. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Heavenly Father, bless me in my current state of life and allow me to fulfill your will with gratefulness and joy in my heart. This I pray in Jesus' holy and mighty name. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. God bless your families, brothers and sisters. God bless our Catholic faith and couples for Christ.